Hello YouTube friends. This is Teresa Louise. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm just going to work on some UFOs. So I thought I would um, have you join me. Hi Sandra. Hello Kathy. How are you ladies doing? Hello Laura. How are you today? Hi, Brenda. And how are you? I'm going to work on some UFOs today. Hi, Kim. Hello, Karen. Um, so I thought I would just have you hang out in the sewing room with me today. Hello, Nancy. Um, and I'm going to post. Hi, Jessica. Oh, Sandra just finished a UFO herself. <laughs> I'm doing okay. It's a beautiful day out there today. Hi, Jacqueline. How are you doing? Um, let's see. I'm just going to paste. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm. Whoops! <laughs> I hit the wrong. I hit the wrong key there. Now I have to get back to my channel here. I want to... Nope, did it again. Boy, that's really... I'm trying to uh, post the Facebook group. Um, let me see. Let me do it that way. Give me just a minute. It doesn't... I'm doing. Huh. That's weird. I'm trying to pin it to the top is what I'm trying to do. But every time I touch it, it uh, takes me over to Facebook. Yeah, I did it again. Huh. That's not really what I want to do. Hi, TC. How are you today? Hi, Ellen. Okay, I'm just going to try it a couple of more times. Hi, Mary. Hmm. No, nope. that's weird. Oh, well. Hi, Stare. How are you doing? Let's see. Hi, Larray. Did I? Um, hi, Karen. I think I said hi to you already, Mary. Mary Woods. It's hard to keep track sometimes of who I've said hi to and who I haven't. <laughs> Ellen. Um, I think most of you guys know this, but just in case you don't. Ellen has a YouTube channel. You should go check her out. And uh oh, Laura's in Arizona and it's about 64 degrees and sunny. That would be nice. I think I have about 40 outside and it is sunny, but it's still kind of cold. Um, TC is doing some hand binding and I'm going to work on some UFOs so that I have piled up here. Um, hi BJ. So I thought I would just, yeah, UFO to, uh, day today and then maybe next week we can do some sort of project. I do have a project that's kind of a UFO that I want to do, so you'll get more information about that. I'm just going to wait for a few more people to come on. Um, but until then, until I get started on it, I'll tell you what you need. Now, <clears throat> here's my... Remember I made this rice bag for um, pressing seams? 
well, I don't remember what Sunday that was now, but <laughs> that video is gone. I, I don't know what happened. I honestly don't know what happened to it. So I want to make another one, and but I'm going to make it smaller so that I have a video about making this you know on my channel so I hope you guys don't mind I think I'll have time to make the whole thing because I'm pretty much ready just to do it this time but this time like I said I'm going to make it smaller so I have two pieces of fabric that are seven by seven and I put um, stabilizer on both of them on the backs already and I'm using SF like Sam Frank 101 it's a Pellon product but you can use whatever you want you know if you have something stiffer more heavy-duty that might be good um, because of the weight of that the rice might be helpful to just have it a little stiffer but I feel that the SF 101 is good enough for me and then I cut out for the handle um, it's two and a half by five because this bag is going to be smaller the other one I did on the bigger bag was um, two and a half by six I believe and then I just put a little piece of stabilizer on it also so that'll make it a little stiffer I need to still um, iron that down so I think this one will go pretty fast since I already know what I'm doing. I've made one already. Um, but I want to say that I really feel like this works well. And if you don't have a wooden clapper, um, you could use this to put, after you press your seams, put this on there. And this bigger one, I think I did 10 by 10. Um, yeah, I did. And it took almost four pounds of rice. So it's pretty heavy. But the other thing that I really like about this is I can use it as a weight on my ruler. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've done it several times and it work, works really well. And I've been using this all, all week to press my seams or to make my seams flatter and I think it works pretty good and we all have some scrap fabric we could use you know and you don't necessarily have to use rice I had some um, rice that was pretty old it was some really yucky brown rice <laughs> that I wasn't going to eat so that's what I used in here and the good thing about that if I ever do get to the point where I'm starving and need food, I can always come up here and uh, take the rice out of here. Because if I'm that hungry, <laughs> you know, I'll eat it. Right? So, hello, Beverly. Right, that's what we said last time I made one. Um, so, some of the other ideas that were out there about this was um, microwave it heat it up and you can use it you know on your shoulder or somewhere maybe have your have your other person whoever that might be you know put it on your back that weight I think would feel pretty good um, hi Shirley from Canada how are you doing that's right we'll survive um so the other idea and this was came up from i believe brenda um my husband is is a avid target practice you know <laughs> he likes to shoot his guns and pistols and that kind of thing and when he saw it he's and picked it up he said that would make a great um target practice you know that they they put their rifle muzzle in here out on the bench <laughs> so I think if you made this like in um, man fabric 
maybe camouflage or something like that. Um, and I definitely would want to use a canvas or something heavy duty and not my quilting fabric because it's going to go outside, you know, get in the mud, thrown in the back of the truck, you know, who knows all what. So I definitely would use like a canvas of some sort, more a uh, little heavier duty if you're going to gift it as a for target practice. <laughs> um, so what are some of the other things, you know, put it in the microwave, get it nice and warm, and you could put it on sore spots on your body. Um, besides the seam press, like I said, you can use it for to hold your ruler down. I use it for the big ruler, this one, because um, I'm always slipping that in. By the time I get down there, that end slips. But with a little weight on it, that helps. So, yeah, you right, Nancy. Definitely, you could use sand. So when I make my husband one, that's what I'm going to do is use sand instead of rice. Um, cause I don't think it needs to have rice. Now he does have some of those out there that are made with rice and are made with sand. Um, the sand is a little bit heavier, but, and I, th so yeah, you could use, do that. Um, hi Nancy, how are you doing? Yeah, wa okay. Hi, Anne. Wax canvas. That's a great idea. Hi, Mary Jane. That is an excellent idea because then it would be more waterproof. Um, there are some sprays you can buy that waterproof um, material. So you, if you don't have um, waxed canvas, you can buy it in the spray can and um, spray your canvas pieces. So yeah, some great ideas. Um, the other thing I want to do is, and I won't do it today, but one of these Sundays, I want to make those um, chicken uh, pin cushions. And instead of putting stuffing in them, I'm going to put rice because I have one, I have one of those pin cushions downstairs. And actually, hold on just a second. I have one over here, so I'll grab it. Um, so the other thing is if you have um, friends that... Um, so, you know, and you need gifts. I think this is a great gift idea. So here's the chicken that I'm talking about. So I think this would work really great filled with rice. And then instead of a handle, you would just pick it up by, you know, its head. And then you could still use it for your pins. Um, and that's what I'm kind of doing downstairs with the little chicken I have down there. I'll just set it on my um, seams. And that's what gave me the idea, actually, to make this one. But then I was thinking, I should have it more dual purpose, where I could still put pins in it. This one, I could put pins in it, but the way you pick it up, I think the pins would kind of get in the way. Um, so... What do you guys think about that? Making one of the, these sometime and filling it with rice and using it. Because I think this big one is has a pretty big bottom. So it would still press your seams if they're smaller ones, I think. Anyway, that's an idea. And I love these little chickens, but I love chickens. <laughs> And this actually, this pattern comes from Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, Jenny Doan made this one time and I just fell in love with it. So I have several of them and this is another great gift idea. Um, 
So I'm trying to also throughout this year, I want to um, kind of keep a list of these things that we're doing together that are great ideas for gifts for Christmas. And then um, later on the, in the year, like in October, September, October, November, you know, we can start talking about these things again. So, yeah, put the top half batting, exactly, and the bottom half with rice. Yeah, because you want it a little bit heavier, so I would do like at least half of this with rice, and then the top half with the batting or stuffing, polyester stuffing of some sort. Um, this one I happen to have like um, walnut shells in it, but they all settle down to the bottom. But you could still, if you don't want to use rice, uh, you want to use walnut shells. I think rice would be cheaper though. Um, but you can get those ground up walnut shells through pet stores and stuff, and that's a lot cheaper to go that way. Um, rather than going through a quilt store. <laughs> but do whatever you want. <laughs> I always try to look for the least expensive way to um, make my creations, you know. Um, so, yeah. So I'd love to hear if you come up th throughout the year with a great gift idea. If you could post that over in the Facebook group, and then I'll keep track of those. And then later on in the year, um, like I said, closer towards Christmas, we could start making some of those. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, you wouldn't, um, Brenda says, but consider the microwave. Yeah, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't be able to really to put this in the microwave. I think regardless of whether or not you used rice, um, but right, if you didn't put rice in this one, then you wouldn't be able, to, it wouldn't be dual purpose. I like things to have a dual purpose, don't you? You want things in your sewing room that you can use for more than one thing, because if you, a lot of us have limited space. I know I have a big room, but I still like um, things to have a dual purpose. So this, like this, you know, has three or four different purposes. And so, yeah, this too would also. Thank you, TC. Um, that's funny, you know, your initials are my initials. This is my last name starts with a C. <laughs> and people that I used to work with, of course, when my last name used to start with a B, Everybody called me TB um, at work. Thank you, Kim. You have a floss keeper cut out? Awesome. My floss keeper? Floss wallet? That's cool. So, all right. So that's some ideas. Um, also, if there's anything you would like to work on, throughout the year. Um, I'd love to hear those ideas over on the Facebook group or put the comment down below the video um, after after the live <clears throat> um, and I'll just keep gathering those up. Um, Kathy says she's definitely loving the chicken idea. Oh, what was in my hand? Um, Nancy L. wants to know what was in my hand. What was in my hand was this little chicken <clears throat> pin cushion. And we're talking about making one of these and putting rice in it for um, making the seam pressers and making it dual purpose. So let's see. Let me look real quick and see if there's anything I have missed. Um, I think I need to clean my phone. It doesn't want to doesn't want to slide. 
Um, I don't think you would need interfacing on the wax uh, canvas. Yeah, it might be more difficult to turn. I mean, it would. I would make that decision based on how heavy my canvas is. If it's not heavy enough, then I might put interfacing on it. And um, I don't think this is that hard to turn because it is 10 by 10 if you're going to make a gun rest. <laughs> Hi, Terry. How are you doing? Oh, I know how it feels to have the fibro funk. Sorry, Shirley. I tried to take really good care of myself this morning, so... I would feel up to be in here <laughs> today. Okay, I think I'm doing good. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and make this. Hi, Marla. Let's go ahead and make this um, seven by seven rice bag. Okay. Hi, Kay. How are you today? How are your knees? Okay, like I said, I have two pieces of fabric, um, seven by seven. I also put interfacing on them already, also seven by seven. That's all you need there. And then for the handle, this is two and a half by five, and I put interfacing on that also. Um, on the handle, you want to go ahead and Fold that in half, and then we're going to press that. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. I'm going to bring you guys up just a little closer. Sorry about the lighting. I'll be glad when I get these overhead lights taken care of so you don't have these other lights um, staring at you. So then I'm going to, I, I, did the, I did the half already. Now I'm going to fold the raw edges into the center. And then I'll press those also. I also need to make me an iron uh, station that I can <laughs> bring over here in front of me. So press the other one. I'm sure you guys know how to do this. So both raw edges will be pressed into towards the middle. And then you bring them both in and then fold it over. Press it down. Press it down firmly. It's pretty thick now. And then I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch all around. The kids wore you out last week? I bet. <laughs> I bet. Uh, oh, kind of need to turn the lights on there. I already made sure that I had enough bobbin. And um, I have a fairly new needle on here, so that's, that's good. <laughs> So just an eighth of an inch all the way around. Oh, I'm going to stop. <laughs> I forgot. Now I got to take that out. <laughs> I like to fold these raw edges in too. 
I forgot to do that. So I'll undo that a little ways. A little more. These seam rippers are pretty sharp. It's seam ripper on this end and a stiletto on that end. If you ever want to treat yourself, <laughs> you can get these from T's Quilt, T Quilts. And they you can hide both of those away. I'm sure most of you guys have seen these from T. They're not cheap, but they're handmade, so you have to, you know, take that into consideration. And this has stayed sharp for a long time and it's stainless steel. Anyway, I really like it. And it's heavy enough and fat enough if you have arthritis hands. Um, anyway, all right, so these raw edges on here, I'm going to fold those in also. The stiletto's pretty handy. So that's going to be pretty thick on that end, but if you just go pretty slow with your sewing machine, it should be okay. And sometimes you have you need your stiletto to kind of push that forward or just stays there. <laughs> sometimes when you're not on both feed dogs it um, and it's really thick like that. You'll just stay in one spot. And that's a little annoying. Especially on some of the other sewing machines where the feed dogs are far apart. That's the one thing I like about this sewing machine. The feed dogs are pretty close together. I'm just folding that other end in. Kind of wishing I'd made this handle four by five. That's probably what I should have done, but. I'll have to write that down for next time. <laughs> okay. Got that. Let's see. Oh, it is. Awesome. TC says that stiletto is going to be on her Mother's Day gift. Awesome. Yeah, I got the set. Oh, here it is. So this is like a little pressing tool. And then that's the stiletto. I got that for myself for my birthday. <laughs> I really like them. Oh, thank you, Cam. Looks like we got got trolls. I've never lived back east, but I have traveled back east. And I've been to the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and um, my husband has family in 
Tennessee and um, Georgia, I think. Yeah. Okay, there's that. So that's ready to put on. Now, you'll want to go ahead and put that on your top piece. This is going to be my top piece. Hi, Donna. Nancy uses a stiletto a lot. Karen has those in orange and brown. The stiletto set. Hi, June. Yeah, they're really nice. Hi, Cherie. And I've had it now for, well, over a year. And um, that... I use that seam ripper quite a bit and it's still real sharp. Oh yes, trolls go watch the football. <laughs> oh, I forgot football was on today. Uh, Pleasant Hope. I haven't heard of that. Oh, Ellen has a three-piece set. Oh, the needle case. Oh, I'll have to get me that. I'll have to put that on my Christmas list. That would be nice. And Kathy has a pink and blue. Ooh, I bet that's pretty. Hi, Colleen. Uh, Brenda took a class yesterday, and she needs a portable pressing station also. Maybe 18 by 22. That's what I'm thinking. So one side I can have a pressing station, and then the other side I'm going to um, glue down a cutting board. That might be one of the things we do on the channel. That would be fun. Um, you made the, the um, pineapple blocks, right? Um, Terry says, Teresa, I know you don't care for the brown rice, laugh out loud, but can you make it shorter in height and save on rice? Sure. Yeah, you can. I think it would, well, if you made it shorter in height, I think it still would be, like, just put three, um, three pounds of rice in there, or two pounds of rice. Um, this one is going to be probably shorter in height, and it's only seven by seven. So, okay, let's see. So I'm gonna get, a, get going on sewing this. I came on early, earlier today because I keep going over my time. <laughs> yes, pineapple ruler, yep, okay. I did say Colleen. <laughs> what do you mean that never happens? I love Tula Pink fabrics too. Uh, most of them. Some of them I'm not too crazy about. Okay, so this is going to be my bottom. This is my top. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put my handle on there. Now you can be really picky if you want and find out where the center is. I would just fold this in half and kind of make a little crease there. And then you could measure um, your sides here so you know that you're kind of centered. So let's see. That's about one and a quarter from that side. And about one and a quarter from that side. I did pretty good. 
Now, now I'm just going to sew the down and I'm going to go forward and back several times. least three times <laughs> three times is good I have a stew going on today because um, I figured I wouldn't feel like cooking after doing the live so Sunday's gonna be soup day I have a nice vegetable soup stew going on downstairs in the crock pot and then we'll have uh, some dinner rolls with that I made another batch of monster cookies so we can have that for dessert so that's on there Oh, really? Uh, TC says her mom spent her entire life correcting everyone. Oh, really? Huh. I must have pronounced it right. That's amazing. Okay, so pretty sides together. And I am going to, I'm a pinner. You don't have to pin if you don't want to. You can use clips or whatever, but I'm going to pin. And what I usually do is I double pin where I want to stop. That'll be my stopping point. That tells me, hey, stop there. Just a nice friendly reminder. Because <laughs> you are going to want to leave an opening for uh, your rice and... Um, and to turn it, of course. All right, remember we're gonna box the corners too, so don't let me forget that this time. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what they would say instead of how they pronounced it. Of course, I can't hear you, so. It does sound yummy. That's what I thought. A nice, hearty vegetable uh, stew. All right, I think that's enough pins. Oh, right, Kim. Your name. I could see me getting your name wrong for sure. Hi Tiffany, how are you doing? How are you feeling today, hon? Okay, let's sew. And then I'm going to roll back so I know where I was. Um, okay, I'm going to start here where my two pens are. And I'm just going to do a quarter of an inch stitch all the way around. And I'm going to back stitch the corner. No, don't do that. We're going to cut those off anyway. You don't have to back stitch. This bag is going to be you know, quite a bit lighter than that last one I made, so.
You gotta have a little bit of weight though to press those seams down. So there is that. Um, did you guys make the bag yesterday on Stephanie Stitches YouTube? If you haven't, oh, that's super cute. I got it started, but my back really started killing me. Um, so I didn't finish it. But I'll show you how much I got done here in a minute. Um, I'd like to go ahead and finish that, but I would have to bring her video up. <laughs> I do okay with zippers, but um, sometimes I get, get it backwards. Okay, coming up to my two needles. Leave me enough room there. Now I'm going to back stitch here. Opening. All right. So I am going to move us over here. So I quarter of an inch all the way around. Now I'm going to box these corners. And there's different ways you can do that. Um, some people measure you know, an inch down or whatever, and then cut those off, but I don't do it that way. Um, so, uh, who was it earlier? Terry. This, I think it was Terry, um, asked if you could make it flatter. This is where you would do that at. Um, like this rice bag, when I bought a box of these corners, it turned out like looks like about three inches yeah three inches so if I wanted to make this flatter then I wouldn't wouldn't have um, made such a big box on this so that's one way to do it uh, my last name is really hard to pronounce everybody Everybody gets it wrong. Um, nobody gets it right. <laughs> so that's one reason why I decided to use Teresa Louise because um, it's a lot easier to pronounce. So this boxing, you just line up both seams. Snuggle those in with each other. And then where the point is where my sewing down here, that's where I'm going to measure from. And I'm just going to, I think I'll do an inch. You see how I want to keep that nice and flat. No, I think I'm going to do an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to mark that. Use whatever marking tool you want. <laughs> and then I'm going to sew along on that line. You can back stitch on this. You might want to do that um, because it is going to have rice in it. I'm going to back stitch this other end. Okay, that's that corner. I'm telling you, um, I'm allergic to fabric. <laughs> Always, once I start playing with fabric, my nose starts itching. Colleen? Oh no. Huh. Colleen. Really? Hmm. 
And I'll be darned. Well, there's not even an A in it, it's an O. And there's only one L. So, Colleen, Colleen, that's how I would pronounce it. <clears throat> Kimla. Is that right? Oh yes, Tiffany, put your, um, if you haven't already, your channel in so that um, Colleen can subscribe to your channel. Oh, you have to get, okay, Sherry, you're talking about the bag needs to get foam for it. Yeah, I used foam for it. I, I think it'll stand up a lot better. Oh, Tiffany, I'm sorry. She has a headache. Hi, Vicki, how are you doing? Hi, Marie. How are you? Yep. Happy Sunday. No football. Did I miss anybody else? Yeah, Kim Luff. So I probably pronounced it right. You had a sheriff there for years with the last name. With my last... Oh. Yeah, um, you pronounce it Chafee. Even though it has... Um, two F's in it, the A is still long. I mean, I even got it wrong the first time. Because, you know, you would think it would be Chaffee because of the two F's, but it's not. It's Chaffee. And I think some people back east know how to pronounce it because one of those states back there had a governor named uh, Chaffee. So, and he pronounced it the same way. Oh boy, uh, Brat. Hi, Brat. Um, D. Dominic. D. Ma. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, let me keep going. The other reason I use... Hi, Diane. How was Art Quilt Day? Oh, thanks, Nancy. Um... You can keep working on it, though. I need to work on it next. I need to keep going here. I did get it. Okay, great, Kim.
Okay, so does anybody remember what I did? <laughs> I did one and a quarter. Yeah, one and a quarter. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and finish boxing these. You got to chat, but nothing else. I popped in for a second just to see what was happening, but I had to get ready for live, so I couldn't stay. I'm just going to go around and box all the corners. And since this is a 7-inch bag, I'm just going to do one and a quarter. All the way around. Oh, sorry. I always forget <laughs> to move you. So, is anybody watching football today or listening to the football game? I won't be. Um, I don't know. I don't know if my husband will or not. He probably doesn't even know that there's football today. <laughs> he doesn't really follow it. Which is okay with me. My first husband was kind of a fanatic. I think I did that one a little bigger. <laughs> Whoops. Yes, anybody who has a channel, um, yeah, go ahead and add the channel link. I'm going to put all of you guys in the description one of these days so people can just go down there too. Yeah, anybody who has a channel, you go right ahead. Hi, Dolores. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm working on um, doing some UFOs today. And right now I'm making a rice bag seam presser. <laughs> or whatever you want to use it for. Thank you so much for subscribing. Okay, so now I can cut all those off. Yeah, I butcher last names, too. Oh, boy. Okay, cut all those off. Just about a quarter of an inch away. I wanted to make all of these bags match. So that's why I'm doing the Tula Pink again. So I had some uh, 10 by 10s uh, extra. So, okay. Now I'm going to turn it inside out. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you today? Oh, 
D mink. Okay. I'm funny. <laughs> I try once in a while. Yeah, it's mostly people out west that pronounce it wrong. Most people um, in the east pronounce it right. Great, thank you. Thank you for subscribing to Tiffany. Really? Oh, I think I you told me that before, Terry. That's pretty cool. Yeah, people always try to spell my uh, first name with a H. But, and I used to say something, you know, about it, but I don't anymore. I don't care. I, I mean, it's a little thing. Unless it's going on a document that, you know, it needs to have it right. That's one thing. But if it's just, like, if it was in the chat and somebody spelled it with an H, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't correct you. <laughs> this is really no big deal. All right. Okay, Tiffany. She said she'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to fill this up with rice. Oh, she is back. <laughs> exactly, no big deal. Oh, that would be awesome, Tiffany, if you could do that. I think Ellen's in here and Kathy both have channels. And then, of course, your channel. Because um, Kim has a hard time with it, and I'm, I would do it, but look at that. Isn't that cute? Oh, my gosh. Look at that. So cute. Now I'm going to fill it up with rice. I think these would make great gifts. <laughs> okay. Here's some more yucky brown rice. <laughs> yeah, a good size for a ruler weight, too. Okay, here we go. This is where a third hand would really come in handy. So I'm going to use this. <laughs> and then, if you tilt, tilt your funnel a little to the side there, and then drop the rice on the edge of it, it'll go down pretty good. Just don't, you know, just don't go too fast. If you had a funnel that had a bigger hole, that would be better. Or, or you could use roll up a piece of paper too and do it that way. I think it's a, whoops, see, I just dropped a bunch in there. Now i got to shake this. Hey, 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 Heather. How's it going today? How are those rotten kids? <laughs> they driving you crazy? I say that fondly, too. Too much. I need more. 
Thank you for doing that, Tiffany. That was really nice of you. Uh, uh, yes, I do have your address. <laughs> you do get rice all over the place, I have to tell you. At least I do. Not quite full yet. I want more than that. I did too. I I had rice all over the cutting table and the floor. I'm still picking it up. want it nice and full but uh, got to leave yourself room to be able to sew sew that so a little more <laughs> well I know you have a lot of comments about the kids so <laughs> I, they must be Hanyakins. That's what my grandparents used to call us and my mom is Dutch. I probably could just pour it in that hole. I'm going to just try that. Kind of got a rice all over, but oh well, we knew that was going to happen. What does it mean, Hanyakin? <laughs> yeah, they make or exactly. Um, it's like. Yeah, a basin under it would be good. It's like, um, like you, uh, like dang brat. Yeah, it's hanyaks. It's like damn brat, you damn brat, or. It means you're being a brat. Yeah, you could use beans. I don't know why not. I would use little beans, not the big beans. All right, just a little bit more. Okay, Tiffany. Yes, it's going to be like a clapper. Oops. Here's my other one. This is my big clapper. It's made with 10 inch squares and um, almost four pounds of rice. But I want a small one, too. And this one, uh, definitely a lot lighter. Definitely not going to use as much rice. Hi, Shelly. It is cute. Whoop. 
Yes, I was a brat. Well, there was five of us little brats. Of course we were brats. Three girls and two boys. Raised on or out in the country, <laughs> mostly. On ranches and farms and stuff. When uh, The times we did live in town, we were not well behaved. We weren't city kids. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough. Now, now the dip hard part, closing that up. So, just going to finger press the seam, both seams. Hello, my quilt projects. How are you doing today? A glorified goat, in other words, a brat. Exactly. My uh, grandmother on my mother's side was full Dutch and actually that is the only Dutch word I learned <laughs> and she did um, she didn't know that much Dutch but my great-grandfather did because they came over from Holland but I wasn't really around my great grandfather and grandma that much I mean they lived in different areas than we did and they raised sheep down um, in Idaho okay I'm just gonna pin this yeah um, you can put a strip of batting in there if you want to. You sure can. Whatever is easier for you. Oh, she did, Mary? That's funny. Your mom called driver. She was mad at Hanyaks. <laughs> Hi, Grace. How are you today? I'm sure it's probably not a popular word. People who are Dutch or new Dutch people probably heard it before. All right, now let's see if we can sew that. Doubt. You know, I might have to hand sew that, you guys. I think I put too much in there. Yeah, I'm going to have to hand sew it. Dang. I had a feeling I was putting too much in there. But that's all right. I can hand sew it if I can find a needle. Yep, there's a needle. There's the other one. Cute, cute. Grab me some thread. I probably should use black thread, but do I have any black thread over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on. Let me grab some black thread. He's going to be so cute. Yeah, I filled it up just so that I probably could take some of the rice out, but... 
That's all right. I don't mind doing this. As long as I can see the eye of the needle. That might be the hard part. Hey, I did it. Yay. I'm a licker. <laughs> so maybe not so much rice if you don't want to end up hand sewing. I don't mind hand sewing it. This takes a little longer. And I'm just going to do a whip stitch. But I'm going to make sure I take, do it in small stitches because of the weight of the rice. And um, it might take me a few minutes. Oh, you use a stapler? Huh. Uh, use a stapler with bag making. Staples first. Are you... Before you hand sew? Yeah, cake pan, that would have been good, or something. Something like that. Might as well take some of these out. Not going to need them now. How's Grace doing today? Your grandmother called people short heads. I'm having a good day so far. Yeah. I got a stew going in the crock pot. And I don't have to watch football. I'm in my sewing room making another rice bag seam presser. And it's really cute. It's Tula Pink fabric. And I think these would be awesome gift ideas. Especially um, if it was a, for a, a sewer, you know. Find out what kind of fabric they like. Or style of fabric, you know. And um, plus you could... This is a great project to use your scraps. You could even use um, orphan blocks. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think that would be really pretty. I don't have a thimble up here, and I'm wishing I did. <laughs> Pushing this needle through there. TC says she's still a brat. She'd throw one of these clappers at her husband. <laughs> that might hurt. They're pretty heavy. Grace says she's doing uh, fine. She has too many projects going on at once. I know the feeling. That's why I'm doing UFO Day. Um, and not getting much done. So she's taking a break. Yeah, 
Yeah, I am want to share another thing with you on the um, sew sampler. Oops. One of the sew sampler projects. So I have a little bit to share on that before we go. How are we doing on time? Almost 3 o'clock. Great. This is why I started early because um, of all the chatting, it takes me a while to get projects done. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure we had enough time. That's right, you can do whatever you want to with your bag. Oh my goodness, Kim, I couldn't even pronounce that. I can pronounce donkey. <laughs> How's Judy doing today? My phone, I think I need to clean my phone. Oh wow, I'm way behind on the chat. Hi, wooly girl. How's Pam doing today? Hi, Nita. How are you? I'm making another um, rice bag. Rice seam presser bag. A smaller one this time. My um, thank you, Kim. Boy, we're getting a lot of those trolleys today, aren't we? The video I made for making this disappeared somehow. I don't know what happened. I'm sure it was my fault. So I decided to do another video on it. But this time I made one smaller. Um, the first one was 10 by 10 and this one is 7 by 7. And it's super cute. All right, I think I'm at the end. Yep. I'll just take a couple of stitches right there. Hello, Patty. How are you? Stealth mode, huh? That's all right. And then I'm just going to bring my needle up there. And there. Okay. Look at that, you guys. Isn't that cute? Got pandas on it. That's so cute. It's, it's definitely not as heavy as this one. Four pounds, <laughs> almost four pounds of rice in that one. And let's see. This is a two pound bag. I think I used about a pound and a half. So cute. It is so cute. I love it. <laughs> this is why I like making things. One of the reasons. Because you can really get some cute ideas going. And that hand handle is just boy right at the right spot doesn't quite fall over so that's good i figured that out right anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> 
chuck it across the room and see if it stays together? Of course it's going to stay together. If I chuck it across the room, the dog's going to think it's um, a dog toy. Yeah. Oh, that's right, Brenda. It wasn't. No, it was a full 10. No, yeah, wasn't it? Might not have been. Might have been like nine, nine something because in, um, even the other 10 inch squares I pulled out of there for this one, they weren't quite 10 inches either. Thank you, Pam. Having a rough rehab day. I'm sorry, Patty. What happened with uh, Nita? What did I miss? Well, we can't go back and find it, but I'm doing house, doing house, the house coming along. I need it for the small half square triangles I'm, you're working on. Oh, right. That'd be perfect. Perfect. So after it's all sewn together, let's see, it is it's about four by four. So now look, is it aren't those gonna look so cute hanging out in the sewing room like that? Yes, they are. I'm gonna make another one. awesome project okay now do you have any questions that that's right and that's why it worked out huh that is right it was a one and a quarter away the handle was yep so that's why it worked out. Well, I would go back and fast forward, rewind the video and make yourself one of these. These are awesome. Okay, if I miss something in the chat, if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, yeah, Cam, I'm sorry. I know, those trolls are a pain. Well, you only need... Um, seven inch square two of them for this project and then um, the handle was two and a half by five inches and then just some old yucky rice that you don't want <laughs> great okay let's see we are at almost three o'clock so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about 
That's true, Kim. Thank you. I'll put this stuff out of my way. Grab a cup of tea. Oh, probably they should stand up for a minute. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Stretch those legs, right? That's a great idea, Karen. I'm going to have a little bit of tea, and then I'll talk to you about a couple of things I want to show you guys before you go. Hey, we have 58 people. Yay. Oh, yeah, you know what? I hit another milestone on my channel, too. Um, the, YouTube says that I have 8,000 watch time hours. <laughs> they were happy for me. They sent me a congratulations. Said more people are choosing to watch my videos. So I thought that was great. Yeah, let's do yoga. Oh, yeah, okay. Do need to. All right, everybody get up. If you haven't been up yet in a while, get up and let's stretch. Oh, feels good. All right. My husband is pretty well done. Remember, he was working on the sheath. All right, so here it is. He handed it to me this morning and said, Happy Valentine's Day, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. Uh, so him and I collaborated together on this. I did the artwork, and then I transferred my artwork onto the leather and then he um, tooled all the leather so are you guys ready to see it mm -hmm -hmm. are you ready here we go now don't get scared hi jim can't do yoga you can do hand yoga arm yoga you have arms Oh, okay. Well, you're going to miss it, Nancy. Here we go. There it is. <laughs> it's a snake. And then, down here, is a longhorn. And then the snake, see, so comes down and wraps around the longhorn like that. Okay, and then you open it, and it has two, these knives are a matching set. Yeah, he, he, you know, put this whole thing together, did all the stitching. This is what he was hammering on earlier last week. And then, so you see all that. And then here's the for your belt. And he made this really big so that um, you can put it on your side like this, you know. And then the belt goes in here. And then it goes around your belt loop. Stick it in your belt loop and then in here. And so, yeah, <laughs> I thought that was a great idea. Anyway, I think he did an awesome job, really. So, anyway, that's what he's been working on. Yep, he did a pretty nice job. So, I want him to do some more. <laughs> Thank you, June. Thanks, everybody. Happy anniversary, Jim. Yeah, he he's a lot more talented than he lets on. He doesn't think he is, but he does pretty good. Yeah, I, I think he did an awesome job. It is really cool. And it gives him something to do. 
Hi, Melissa. How are you doing? Okay, so, yeah, so we did great. Here's the next thing I'm going to work on. Oh, I wanted to show you my bag from uh, Stephanie's Stitches Project yesterday. I'm not going to work on that today or in the filming, but here's my, my start. So I just need to do the zipper. Isn't that cute? So it'll be Stephanie's Stitch, Stitches bag. Um, if you didn't see her video yesterday, you could go back, um, go to her channel, and um, she teaches you how to make this bag. And it's going to be like a cosmetic bag, or you could put notions in it, or what have you. Um, so, anyway, that's what I was working on a little bit yesterday. There's the inside fabric. And then I'm going to use this bright pink, bright pink uh, zipper. <laughs> okay. So that's, yep, he punched the holes and then uh, sewed in the thread. And it's, you know, um, leather thread so and he did all the uh, punch work so I did the artwork so I just did some artwork on paper I did this you know I did all the artwork and then I took tracing paper or carbon paper and I um, traced it onto the leather and then kind of went back over it with a bold pencil pen so that he could see it really well and then he tooled it all in and um yeah he did a great job yeah stephanie will love it Okay, so the next project is this one. And this is the Petunias pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. I showed you this the other day. And it is from the July box of 2021. And hi, Emily. Thank you, Vivian. Hi, Polly. Um, you got a petite fat eighth bundle of uh, Lola Batik fabrics. And so I think you got like 12 fat eighths, okay, to, to do the project. Well, the pattern, as you can see, is three by four three by four and i had a whole bunch of fabric left over i'm like well what am i going to do with all this extra fabric so i decided to see if i could make um more flowers and i i did so i actually had enough fabric to make um, eight more flowers. So I'll be able to do four across and four down. So that is one of the things I wanted to show you. And then I will only have that much fabric left over. And there's not really enough pieces 
to make more of these flowers with the leftovers unless I sewed them together or I made some of them scrappy but um, I have just the right amount of fabric to go ahead and make this quilt um, four by four instead of three by four so or four, actually it'd be four by five it's going to be four by five instead of three by four so that's really cool and what I did was um, all of the flowers that you make that are the little short flowers or half flowers I used all of the material that I used for those then I used them to make the full flower and all of the material that I used with the full flower I may use to make for the half flower so it'll come out really it'll come out good of course you are going to need more background fabric if you does anybody have this pattern I sh guess I should ask that first Who's Greg? <laughs> Hi, Nellie. How are you doing? That's okay. Yep, got two artists in the family. Okay, let's see. So, is anybody else doing, you have the pattern, Anne? Okay, have you made it yet? So there is enough fabric that comes with the sew sampler um, to make four by five, okay? where you don't have to purchase any more of your primary fabric. So here's some of the blocks. I have them hanging up here. So like I said, every um, the fabric that I used for this one, then I, I had enough to make a flower block using that same fa fabric. And then this one I had enough to make. Here's the fabric here, see. So I think that's pretty cool. Definitely going to have to have more background fabric and more border fabric, but I didn't do the math on that yet. But I did want to tell you that. Now I didn't use, there's actually two pieces of fabric that isn't getting used at all. In fact, they don't use it in the pattern. Um, so, and since I, well, they might have used it in the pattern. I don't know if they did or not. But because I used a different background than the dark blue, I didn't want the dark blue at all. I wanted the, I used the creamy polka dot. Then I decided not to use these at all because they wouldn't show up, you know. They wouldn't show up very well. I mean, the, my light polka dot that I have here, I had to use it, you know, and it doesn't show up all that great. But what, I, what I'm going to do is when I go to quilt it, I think I'm going to use like red thread or some sort of dark thread to quilt this block and then it'll stand out more. So, because I have the full flower like that too. So, definitely I'm going to have to do something um, for those two blocks. <laughs> Good, Heather.
Sure, stir, stare. Um, yeah, I've been trying to get this stuff done, you know. Um, I have, because I keep telling myself, you don't get to start any really new projects. Now, I think that's why I'm doing these little projects, you know, because didn't really take that long. Once you learn how to do it, you can get them done real quick, you know. And uh, it's really satisfying to be completely done with something. So, um, I haven't gotten any further on the Dresden. I kind of started just working on this. <laughs> on the Petunia. So I'm going to sew some of those together. <laughs> so what are you guys working on? Let me know down there in the comments. And also let me know if you have any questions. I think I'm going to probably... Oh, Colleen, that's funny. Um, yeah, I wouldn't think Harry Potter would be a punishment either, but I definitely would not want to watch the A Team. <laughs> I watch. I actually watched that when I was a kid, because when I got home from school, it was on. Um, Kathy's working on the triple Irish chain quilt. Cool. Oh, awesome. Emily is working on the Tula Pink Daydream Pineapple Quilt. What's the real secret to motivation? Um, well, having days where you feel halfway decent helps. <laughs> and then, you know, I don't know that if there is what... I don't think there is a secret to it. I don't know. Everybody's different. But for me, I just, um, like sometimes I get into a funk where I don't want to do any sewing for a couple of days. And I just allow that to be okay. You know, um, maybe do some reading or catch up on some other stuff. Um, but there have been times where I've gone more than a week without sewing and then because I'm in that funk and I'm like just I just make myself go do it just start on anything I'm like just go clean the sewing room for 30 minutes you know set the timer or 15 minutes whatever you want to do and just kind of be in your space and then pretty quick I start looking around thinking oh I should I forgot all about that. That's pretty. And then finding something that you really want to work on. You know, I have projects in there that are five or six years old and I'm not in the mood to work on them. So I think finding something that um, you really want to work on, you know, like with me with this um, rice bags. I got excited about the idea, you know, I was just sewing away and I was thinking, you know, I really need, I'd be nice to have something to put on my seams for a few minutes. And then the idea just bloomed, <laughs> you know, so that, so then I got motivated and then sharing it with other people, that's a motivator. Yeah, they're in there. They're over there in the other room. Sorry about that. Hold on just a minute.
I'll be right back. Take a break. Well, that felt good to get up and walk a little bit. Sorry about that. He needed something, so I'd have him out for a minute. Um, yeah, sometimes you need something easy to get you motivated. Or yeah, like the clappers that I'm making, or Stephanie's bag. Exactly. Just something real easy. Or um, if you guys do cross stitch. You could make one of my um, floss wallets. Those are pretty easy and they're a lot of fun. Um, hi, Courtney. So, uh, did I go on too long about motivation? But I, you know, I think it's normal for people to get into a funk about it. And, and then different things in your life will affect that, you know. Um, you get sad about something or somebody passes away and, you know, um, you know, just life will kind of get in your way of your artistic motivation. <laughs> Not Willa. Oh, no. Willa's over here. She's over there by the heater and the uh, patio door. I'll show you. And Annie, the other dog, hangs out with uh, the hubby. Oh, you can't see her. There she is. There's Willa. Say hi, Willa. She's limping again. She plays too rough out there on the snow and ice. <laughs> but and other supplements, so hopefully that'll start helping. Yep, she was resting comfortably until I started talking to her. <laughs> so I, sorry about the lights there. Everybody says hello, Willa. Um, a part of what she did to hurt her feet was she broke a couple of toenails when she was playing ball and running on that ice. And so now the toenails hurt and that's why she's limping. Yeah, eye surgery would... Kind of put a damper on things, wouldn't it, Jim? Okay. What are we going to do next? I'll do a little bit of sewing. Sewing and visiting. So I need a couple of more. I can't tell you the measurements, but I need some more of these little ones. This pattern is a lot of fun. And I'm talking about the petunias pattern, but it is very time consuming because it has so many um, sew and flips on the corners. I mean, By the time you get them all done, you are going to be a pro. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 
a pro and they're tiny they're well i can tell you they're one and i think they're one and a half inch square hi agnes how are you doing um And on this pattern, I had to make a, a lot of notes on it because it's so, so involved. Okay. Yeah, one and a half inch squares. And every, each flower type has bunches of them. <laughs> so, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 corners where you do that sew and flip. That's a lot. And that takes time. So. Yeah, lots of prayers, Jim. So I'm just going to make some more of these squares. As I ran out, one and a half. Um, has football started yet? They're having a big football party down at the local VFW today. And yesterday they had a Valentine's dinner. They try to do a lot of things like that down there. Emily says her hubby is from Cincinnati, so they have to watch. Oh. oh, yeah. Are you going to do the skull that you posted, Heather? How big is that quilt? Looks pretty big. Does it come in a kit? Or just the pattern. Eastern time. Must just be a pattern then. At uh, six thirty, okay. Which is three thirty for me. Well, then I'm not interrupting your football day time. Unless you're going to watch all the pre-football stuff. I like the commercials. <laughs> Especially the Budweiser commercials with the little dog and the horses. I like those commercials. Oh, it's not a kit. That's what's vexing you. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to do those without a kit. Oh, well, maybe try the pillow size one first. <laughs> That'd be more my my style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do that, too. I usually, um, Colleen, I usually uh, wear earphones so I can watch what I want downstairs. And then my hubby just has the TV so loud 
because he's pretty deaf. Drives me crazy. Every now and then I'll have to go, I'll have to ask him to turn it down. And it seems like it gets louder and louder as the night progresses. And sometimes I just go, I got to go somewhere else. I can't take it. <laughs> Too loud down here. I'm really sensitive to loud noises. So... Ten yards of fabric. Wow. Um, Cherie picked her own fabric on the um, elephant quilt. I want to do that elephant quilt. That would be cool. <laughs> That's funny. He offered her some earphones, too. Every now and then I'll hand my husband the earphones and say, Could you please watch it with the earphones on? <laughs> and a lot of times he does do it. Because he forgets about putting the earphones on. Okay, now I'm drawing a line corner to corner on one side on the wrong side of the fabric and I'm just using a pencil because that line is the cutting line anyway Cherie says sounds about right Heather depending on how many colors elephant had 11 with the background fabric wow Colleen says, I'm fixing to sing along with the anthem. Nobody wants that. Is anybody going to a Super Bowl party or having a Super Bowl party today? I sing along with the anthem too, but I don't sing it really loud. <laughs> Even I don't want to hear that. Courtney is working on an elephant paper piece scene from Violet Craft. Ooh, I bet that's pretty. I'd like to see that. If you could post a picture in the Facebook group, I would appreciate it. Nope, not Kathy. Party by myself. I do sing loud. <laughs> no football here, says Jim. I'll probably let uh, Brandon know, Brandon's my husband, that there's football on today if he wants to watch it. Because I'm not going to watch it, but if he wants to, he can. I don't care. I can always come upstairs and sew or whatever. And I'm going to watch Tiffany's Quilting Life at 4 o'clock. <laughs> game it's 3 30 from almost now so it should be coming on any time i'll get him kim maybe my phone would quit oh thank you tiffany you're gonna sing with the anthem kim says but not watching Um, does anybody know who's doing halftime? I hope it's somebody appropriate. <laughs> really. Oh, okay. Um, says she'll post a picture when she's done it, and it's for her niece. And the Facebook group is private, so as long as your niece isn't on there, people can't share things, you know. 
um, like they are not able to put it on other groups. So um, Facebook group is I Quilt To with Teresa Louise. It's in the description box below the video here. So all you have to do if you want to join is just hit the X out button on your live chat and then click on the arrow down button and that'll bring up the description box and um, it says there Facebook group and then you click on that link link go over there and um, request to join be sure and answer the questions oh Colleen's leaving okay bye Colleen see you later thanks for hanging out with me and uh, then you can post pictures Oh, she's only five years old, but I bet she's going to love it. Can't really even see what I'm doing, can you? <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys know how to draw line from line, corner to corner. That's all I'm doing. Oh, right. That's a good idea, Heather. Um... She might not have to buy as much fabric because she's going to use ombres and so there'll be, you know, a lot of different colors there to choose from. You're making some waffles real fast. You're going to have bacon too. <laughs> yep, I'm getting hungry myself. Oh, I'm... I kind of wondered, I figured her favorite animal was an elephant. I love elephants too. They're so awesome. No time for bacon. <laughs> yep, Cher, Cherie deleted that. I was trying to read it. Oh, okay. Bye, Lisa. Have fun. Thanks for stopping in. The coin flip is happening right now. She's going to go watch football. Right, different shades. Oh, yeah, that would be pretty, Heather. Um, is it for yourself, or are you planning on buy, uh, making it for somebody? Okay, great. I'll, I'll look at it. Thank you. I'll go look at it right now. I just did my last, <laughs> my last one there. Yay. Okay. When these blocks are, there's just so much with them, I kind of like to switch things up, you know, not, not just like, do all of them at one time like I'll do a hundred <laughs> and then sew for a little bit the other says technically it's for her husband but it'll definitely end up on her bed <laughs> that sounds good okay let's go look at this I wish I could share my screen with you but oh my goodness that's cute She did this one at 60% of full size. 
Oh, that's really pretty. I love those purples. Oh my gosh. That's really pretty. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, you guys, I got to show you this. This is over on um, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan. It's a pin cushion. Oh, it is so cute. It's a donkey. <laughs> I probably shouldn't share it, but I'm going to. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Oh, man. I hope you can see that. <laughs> That's so darn cute. There are some really talented people out there. I'll tell you what. Okay. I probably shouldn't share what's in other people's. But I just had to show you that. That was cute. <laughs> okay, you guys. I think I'm going to head out. That's all for today. That was a pretty long day. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a break before Tiffany comes on and get a little bite to eat. If you're watching this after the live, um, please subscribe. Or if you're watching now and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel. Be sure and hit the bell so you'll be notified. You're welcome to share the videos if you think there's somebody out there in your group that would enjoy my videos. Please share it. You're welcome to join the Facebook group and um, all that stuff. So let's see. Uh, Tiffany's Quilting Live comes on at 4 o'clock my time, which is Pacific Standard Time. Um, if you don't want to watch football, we can all go over there and watch Tiffany. I'm not sure what she's up to today. Then um, Kathy's, cute crea Kathy's Quilts and Crafts is on tomorrow morning, Monday, at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. You could check her out. And so, yeah. Yeah, I love me some sewing friends, too. <laughs> oh, yes, and happy Valentine's Day tomorrow, everybody. Lots of love, big hugs, and all that stuff. So, you guys go make something. I keep looking to see... You know, I'm waiting for y'all to start saying goodbye. <laughs> I Sometimes I hate it when uh, it goes, you know, signing off so fast. So it's like, wait, wait, I want to say goodbye. So anyway. All right. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that project today. And um, yeah, make it, make it for yourself. Is there anything else I need to tell you? <laughs> I don't think so. Bye, you guys. Love you. Happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. If I can turn it off. <laughs>